My name is Rebecca Rebelding and I collect material for the museum's archives. When I first saw this collection, the thing that struck me the most were the children's drawings. They're very colorful, they're very happy, and they're completely different from things that you would expect the Holocaust Museum to collect. There are pictures of children dancing around trees, of happy houses, of horseback riding, of birthday parties, and it's a nice contrast to the things that we normally work with. There are at least a hundred children's drawings in this collection alone. You find stories about these children, and when you read the stories, it's hard to understand how they then became the artists who could do pictures of birthday parties, because you read about these children and the horrific experiences that they went through, and then you realize that they're happier now, their lives have gotten so much better, and that's because of Alice Goldberger. Alice Goldberger was a pretty amazing woman. She was born in Germany in 1897. She was trained as a youth instructor. She had opened up a shelter for disadvantaged children in Germany, but was forced to flee when Hitler came to power and, and kicked her out of her job in this state children's facility. She came to the United Kingdom, to England. She was interned very briefly on the Isle of Man as an enemy alien, because England was at this point at war with Germany. She opened up a children's facility in this internment camp in England, and the psychologist Anna Freud invited Alice once she was released to come work with her in a nursery during the war. And then as soon as the war was over, it seemed very natural for Alice to continue to be involved with helping children. As soon as the war is over, the British government authorized 1,000 war orphans that would come to England and live in England. They managed to only find 732 children that can be brought over. They bring these children over in August 1945. 300 of them get put in various shelters, and Alice is put in charge of one of these children's homes. Between August 1945 and December 1945, these children are living in a camp that was set up for aircraft workers who were working in an aircraft factory during the war. And then in December 1945, they are able to get a home. Sir Benjamin Drake and his wife donate this property called Weir Courtney, which is on the outskirts of London in Lingfield. It's a beautiful estate where Alice, a number of helpers, many of whom were also German or Austrian refugees who had come to England to escape. Hitler move with these children. Alice raised money to be able to maintain these children. They were funded almost exclusively by the British government but also by private donation. She sent out newsletters to interested parties so she'll write about what's going on at the house that particular month and in a lot of them she highlighted various children and, and talked about what they had gone through and what their story was and how they've progressed. And in one of the very first newsletters she talks about how hard it was for these children to get there. They didn't speak the same language. They would cry themselves to sleep. They would hide things from each other because they were afraid of everything being taken away from them again. Alice was very hands-on with the children. She encouraged all sorts of projects, so they had lots of pets, they learned sports, they played games. At one point she writes about the house around the holidays, around Hanukkah and Christmas, how she's counting all the different activities that children are doing in the house. Some are playing checkers, and some are knitting, and some are playing musical instruments. She really tried to create a typical childhood experience for them. Some of the drawings, but surprisingly few, show what these children had gone through. So some of them do show Nazis or the pain and fear of being in hiding, of being in concentration camps. By and large, they're very happy images, and it really shows that Alice was determined to have them work together as a family. That's a picture of 16-year-old Judith Stern and her 9-year-old sister Miriam. Judith survived the Ravensbrück concentration camp while Miriam spent the entire war in hiding. They reunited after the war and moved to England with this convoy of children and lived in Weir Courtney. Judith was one of the oldest of the children, but because she had such a hard time being a teenager during the war, she really understood what was going on in a way some of the younger children didn't. And so I think she was haunted by the war more so than a lot of them. She had a hard time adjusting to life in the UK, and I think it was helpful that her sister had survived. Judith formed a close relationship with some of the women who were working at Weir Courtney, and so she stayed longer than some of the others. Judith is actually the woman who donated this collection to the museum.
This is one of my favorites because Klaus and Norbert were not brothers, but you get the feeling that they were a pair. It reads, once there were lots of boys and girls, and two of the boys were called Klaus and Norbert, and they liked to go to the sea, and they liked to go to the woods, and they liked to go on the bus, and they didn't like rest hour. In my mind, Klaus and Norbert are nine-year-old boys who are always together, getting into tons of mischief. And really, that's what this collection is to me. You see some of these drawings, and there's so much heart in them, and there's so much emotion in them, and it's very easy for me to picture what these children's lives were like. Because of Alice, they were happy lives. You can see that the children are a little older in this one, but if you read it, this is something my dad could have written, this is something I could have written when I went to camp. It talks about tent inspection, it talks about going to breakfast. She really creates a childhood for these children, many of whom didn't have a childhood. It's June 1957. She only has four children left, and she's sending out the very last report before the children go out into the world. And she writes that saying goodbye is always very sad, and for Lingfield House it's always been specially painful because our children have lost too much in their early years of childhood. But though I feel strongly with all of them, I want to express my warmest thanks to you all for everything you've done for our young people. When the children first arrived in England after their liberation from concentration camps, they were showered with gifts and love from all sides, from our Jewish community as well as from friends in England. My fear was then that they would feel again like living in another beautiful ghetto. When you foster parents offered to befriend these children, I was specially happy because I had known and experienced your work through the Hampstead Nursery under Anna Freud. I wanted the children to feel as though the world was still full of good and friendly people who stretched their hand across oceans and wide countries to help their fellow man. You have succeeded in giving our children the wonderful feeling to be rich in all their poverty, to have friends across the sea, friends they have partly never seen, but whom they can trust. I am convinced that our children, though they are not children any longer, will never forget you and hope that they will keep contact with you in the future as well. Thank you very much for your good work. The last children leave the home in 1957. Many of them join the army or go to school. Many of them move to the United States. They stayed in England. A few moved to Australia or Israel. And so the family really kind of split apart. In 1978, there was an episode of This Is Your Life, a popular program in the United States and in the UK. It was This Is Your Life, Alice Goldberger. You can see Alice in the images. And what they did was they brought Alice in. She was in her early 80s at that point, and they reunited her with the adult children. You can get the emotion from the images of them hugging her and seeing her children again. She didn't have any, any children of her own. This was her family. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum continues to collect, so if you have anything that you think we might be interested in, please don't hesitate to contact us.